In your workbook for this week, we've shared a checklist of things to consider before you start recording your own multimedia content. Here's just a taste on this slide, but take a closer look in your workbook and feel free to adapt this for yourself if there are other considerations for the particular content you're creating. Let's go into a little more detail about some of this. Up to now, we've discussed ways to improve the instructional quality of your content. You will also want your content to be of the highest possible technical quality. There are a number of fairly simple steps you can take to increase the quality from a technical perspective. Audio quality can be improved by using a microphone. Relying on the built-in mic in your laptop will result in more audible hissing, pick up clicks and typing or scrolling sounds. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. A headset with a microphone will do fine. If you have one to use with your phone, that's probably an improvement. You can also get a decent USB headset microphone for as little as $30. To prevent popping when you say P, position the microphone slightly away from your mouth or slightly above your mouth. Try not to move too much or bump your desk as these sounds will all be transmitted. Find a quiet space to record. Eliminate as much room noise as possible by turning off fans or air conditioners, other devices that emit noise. Turn off the television in the background or any music that's playing. Warn your coworkers or family members to keep quiet. Choose a time to record that's likely to be more quiet. For a more visually pleasing screencast, make sure you eliminate all the clutter and isolated files on your desktop, and make certain that there are no sensitive or personal documents visible. To keep things simple and running smoothly, you'll want to close out all unnecessary applications running in the background, especially turning off pop-up notifications. If you're recording with your webcam, on the other hand, think about how you can choose or improve your setting to make it more visually pleasing. Again, eliminate clutter in your background. Choose a space with good lighting and a simple background or put up some kind of a backdrop. If you wear glasses, it may take more time to arrange your lighting for less glare. In general, try to keep your own appearance as professional and friendly as possible. You may not feel that you need to sound like a professional narrator, but you should at least want to improve your delivery for the sake of your learners. So many screencasts are dull and boring when a little attention to delivery could make all the difference. Here are a few considerations to keep in mind. It's okay to make the occasional mistake. You're only human. The occasional stumble is acceptable. Too many and you should do a retake. One of the worst problems with narration, however, is sounding monotone. Before recording, practice varying your tone and adding inflection where appropriate. This makes the recording infinitely more listenable. Also, project confidence through your voice, and this will increase confidence in your students as well. Often, we do not realize how fast we talk. With online content, good pacing is essential. Speak clearly and practice talking slower than you think you should. However, long pauses should be avoided as the learner may think there's a technical problem on their end. Have you ever listened to a screencast where the narrator seemed to go on and on to the point of rambling? This is what happens when you lack a concise and focused script or at least a bulleted outline. Stick to the script. Keep your content as brief as you can, and remember that chunking is an option if you have a lot to cover. Lastly, put a smile in your voice by putting a smile on your face. Even if you're not recording in front of a camera, you will discover it makes a difference in your delivery. It makes you sound more confident and helps with the varied tone.